Good morning, everybody. Uh, and it is the morning, not the afternoon like normal. Normally, I'm in my studio here after school, and it's the afternoon, but this time it's in the a.m. It's a Saturday morning in New York City, where I live. And it's a time to talk about one of the stranger things I've noticed in my schedule this year. This is me, your freelance teacher at tfttravelgroup.com, thefreelanceteacher.com. And the interesting thing that I'd like to share with you is that I've been given, after about 12 years of having ex almost exclusively ninth graders in English class, I have 12th grade this year. I have seniors, predominantly seniors this year, two main sections of 12th grade. And there are some very real differences between what I see after a couple of weeks of school between the ninth grade and the 12th grade. So we have the 12th graders coming into class, and I'll just say it straight out, they have a lot less energy. Uh, and that's kind of weird when you think that they are 18 years old, which is so young. 18 is not old, yet the a lot of the body language is that of the elderly, uh, tired, and we just started, right? It's the brand new part of the new year, the new year excitement, um, new school year, fresh start, type of stuff uh, is not, it does not seem to be in the cards. And when you think about it, these young people have been through 1.5 million minutes of organized school. High school is about 2 million minutes. So they've had, uh, let me rephrase it then, 1.5 million minutes of high school thus far. And I made a, a little bit of a list of things that, what that, what that means. Um, and it's predominantly a list of negative things, 1.5 million minutes of bells, when the bell gets going. When you hear the bell go off, you move, regardless of whether you want to go to the next class. And more importantly, regardless of if you're learning something or discussing something that you find fascinating, doesn't matter. Bell goes off, time to go to history, or phys ed, or lunch, uh, or time to go cut the class that you hate even though what you were doing was fascinating and you were intellectually stimulated, that bell goes, you, you go. And one and one and a half million minutes of that kind of thing. Do as you're told and follow are the other things that I have on this list of having one and a half million minutes of doing. And that's really what it is. If you, if you want to get the grade, do as the teacher says you should do. Well, what, what if, what if what you're being told to do at risk of failure and not getting credit is disinteresting or unnecessary or ridiculous? Now, it's not all terrible. You're going to have in your course of, of all of your schooling, particularly I think as you get older and are in high school, you're gonna have exciting, vibrant, intellectually stimulating classes like mine, word, but it's not all gonna be like that. I don't know the percentage. I guess it depends upon where you go to school and what you're interested in. So many of these things depend upon the individual, yet you're in a place where you're considered part of a collective. And so the individual gets lost. So you, 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 know, you have to do as you're told. Uh, and that's a harsh way of saying it. You can sugarcoat these things all you want. Yeah, but what you're, and that's what you hear. Well, what you're, you're doing what you're told, but what you're told is a wonderful, classical liberal arts education where you explore the world and visit different intellectual pathways. Well, I don't know. I mean, my view is colored as to where I've worked. And a lot of times that's not the case. You aren't discovering and exploring wonderful intellectual pathways. It's do this or fail the regents. And if you fail the regents, you fail the class. And if you fail the class, you have to take it over again. And if you don't do all that, you don't get a high school diploma. And then it means you're a failure at life and a failure in general. And you don't, you don't get the benefits of the high school diploma. So best buckle up and do as you're told. I mean, that's harsh, but one of the reasons why I'm popular besides the obvious, right? Hello. Uh, is that I say stuff like that and that's not popular or fun or enjoyable, but that's what you get That's what it is and Students need to be told the way it is not the way they wish it to be um, I have another point on here about the difference and I have the 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 idea that the 12th graders They do seem kind of beaten down and that's 
that's a rough thing to say, but that these young people seem tired, which I mentioned earlier. And the freshmen um, don't seem that, they don't seem to be like that. Uh, they just want to get out. I've mentioned a few things early in the year, and I mentioned off the cuff as a as a way, you know, a way to get your mindset right, that if you are here just to get out and finish, you're on the home stretch. And when you're done, you have a lot more freedom than being in high school. And many that got students perked up. They're like, yeah, that's why I'm here. I just want to get this year over with and get finished. And I hope I can provide intellectual stimulation and, and uh, enervating and exciting classes in that year that you're suffering through to get out. But that's that's not a great place to be spiritually or intellectually or philosophically. Like I'm here and I'm going to do my 180 days penance, do enough to get the 65 or higher and then get out. I don't think that's a healthy mindset. I wouldn't you wouldn't consider that a healthy mindset in any other venue. And it certainly wouldn't be healthy in a school venue where one is supposed to explore and 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 read and talk and trade ideas and have a free movement and a free flow of intellectual curiosity. So I brought up the idea of energy uh, a lot in this uh, discussion, this talk to you so far. And the that's one of the interesting things about the ninth grade is there's so much more energy. They have a lot more vibrancy and there's, and it's why people don't like the ninth grade is because some of that is immature rampant amounts of energy and it leads to immature things going on and noise and chaos and nonsense and and teachers don't like that it's tough to deal with that at the beginning of the year but i always liked it because the students were all over the place and if you know how to run a room and you're a solid instructor you can corral that and not have that burst of energy veered off and beaten down into submission what you do is you use that you channel that energy into thought and talk and friendliness and building relationships with the students and you use that if you don't you don't have to give students massive amounts of work early on if you put energy toward building an intellectual relationship and respecting their intellectual curiosity and their intellect as a whole and then that energy that ninth grade energy these are 14 year olds remember it gets channeled in a very different way than the lack of energy I've seen with the 12th grade. It's it's stark. It's a stark difference between the two age groups. And that, that ninth grade energy, again, it can be tough, and it's why the teaching profession is so bizarre, because it's arguably, ninth grade is the hardest, and uh, at the beginning anyway, least enjoyable, most difficult year to handle at the high school level. You know, mid middle school children are so immature, and they're just off the wall, in my opinion. But ninth grade is you get a touch of that at the beginning. Um, but the energy level is different, crackling with energy and, and extremely different in scope. And that leads to uh, a, just a more energetic room. And but it takes a, a I think it takes a veteran presence to make that work well. And so what happens, unfortunately, in the teacher game is new teachers are given ninth graders, which are the most difficult to deal with, but most important year in my opinion. And the older veteran teachers have 11th and 12th grade because of the quiet. I have a very quiet day. I don't have a lot of noise and nuttiness. I have one freshman, one ninth grade history class that I volunteered to teach. And it's clearly the more energetic group. Now we have nuttiness and I've got distractions and you have, you know, lack of discipline and stuff, but it's it's a different vibe, uh, to say the least. Which means if we go further back, I was listening to, I think it was Brett Vinat in School Sucks or Thaddeus Russell. Uh, maybe it was a discussion between them or I, I, it was somewhere in my tr uh, internet podcast travails where they mentioned uh, a point that God, John Taylor Gatto had alluded to that the five-year-old human has so much energy and so much, it's almost like a genius level intellect uh, that, you know, they've been kind of free and, and, and just with parents or, or maybe in pre-K and at the park. And those young people have learned how to do so many things in five years, learning how to talk, learning how to walk, learning how to eat, learning how to speak with people of different ages, pretending, using your imagination. Let's pretend to do this. And it seems that Gatto's point of school crushing all of that, beating it out of you, 
the 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 rough point I'm trying to make is the difference between ninth and twelfth graders, fourteen year olds and eighteen year olds. I see in my small sample size a lot of evidence of that. So you have a five year old in kindergarten and the creativity and and pretend and make believe and all these things that you imagine yourself doing are there in the five year olds. And they're not there in the 18 year olds. Now, I don't know if that's just because of school. It, it could, uh, my theory is that it is that way. Um, and, I, and I think there's a lot of evidence for that, but I, I'm not, you know, I haven't done a study, but th that's, this is what I see. So my last point is then, I think maybe we start to rethink school. The idea that school has to be six and a half hours of 40 minute periods. I just don't think, I don't think that makes a lot of sense. Maybe for some people it does, and I think a choice should be there for those people where that does work, that kind of regimentation, to have that. But when you look at the Sudbury School model, or uh, the evidence that is there for the results of homeschooling, a term that used to send people into screaming fits, or people who are considered dropouts, what they've done, I don't think if you look at all the groups as a whole, that you're going to be disappointed. I think it lends credibility to the idea that we need to rethink school. John Taylor Gatto, the School Sucks Project. Thaddeus Russell has a Renegade University started up and going. Tom Woods has Liberty Classroom. Khan Academy, for crying out loud, is all over the place. Ubiquitous, if we want to use our amazing SAT vocabulary. And Salman Khan doesn't have a teaching certificate. He doesn't have a state certification in anything. But he taught his nephews and nieces math, and it, and it worked. Tom Woods, same thing. Uh, Thaddeus Russell, same thing. You have all of these people. You know, I'll bet you if there was a business course taught by Bill Gates, people would flock to it. He could probably make another couple million dollars if he said, look, I'm giving a 10-week business crash course. My name's Bill Gates, and I'm going to teach you what we did and how we, work the, how we worked in, in, in starting Microsoft and stuff like that. People would flock to it. He could name his price. And he could say a million bucks for 10 weeks. And people would go berserk getting into that thing. He doesn't have a teaching cert. He's not state certified. He didn't even graduate from Harvard. If he has a Harvard degree, they gave it to him as an honorary degree. He left after two years. Good for him. So all of these things need to be rethought. And you don't need to go to Bill Gates. Oh, well, that's an exception. No, it's not. Venus and Serena Williams, Richard Williams, who was mocked and laughed at as a weirdo and a nut. He got VHS tapes of top flight tennis players and he taught his daughters how to play tennis on a hard top tennis court in Compton, California. So, you know, it just, it's time to, to rethink this. And what got me going was this, this difference between energy levels. The 12th graders are tired. They shouldn't be tired. They shouldn't be. They're 18, they're young, yet they're in there marking time, waiting for it all to end. And what they're not doing is working on their own affairs, uh, following their the things they're they're good at or, or, or tracking down hobbies or, you know, you just don't see a lot of that. They're just marking time and waiting and, and those habits get built up over time. And two million minutes of high school, it's a long time. And you learn, you know, you, you learn negative habits. You learn bad practices by just waiting around for it to finish so that you can be quote unquote freer to do other things. You should do things now while you're young and have quick reflexes and better eyes and, and more energy. So I think it's time to rethink things. I think it's time to have a different paradigm in place. I think it's time to realize that we've got a lot of work ahead when it comes to education and that education does not necessarily mean school that they're not the same and we need to do something like this you know this idea this phrase that gets people all worked up when you talk about school choice everybody with their agenda goes bananas when you say school choice um but that's all it is it's just having a choice and all the people with their different skins in the game and who gets what dollars they go berserk you say school choice and uh maybe you should stop having that knee-jerk reaction and you should consider it maybe we all should that's it for now the freelance teacher.com tft travel group.com talk to you next time thanks again